Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is something of a public service announcement about two security topics. The first is about some things to be aware of when you're using a WordPress Stripe integration. And the second is about securing your WordPress site options. I think these are important topics that everyone should know about. And if you're using Stripe for taking payments with WordPress, then they may also be related. First is the issue with Stripe API keys. And this involves how you set up and configure your Stripe account. Stripe is a popular payment processor that tries to make it easy for small businesses to accept and manage online payments. The process involves setting up a Stripe account and then generating Stripe API keys. These API keys are used by your WordPress site to communicate with Stripe and authorize account activity, like accepting payments. It turns out that there are two types of API keys that you can create. There are restricted keys and standard keys. With restricted keys, you can set what account permissions are allowed. But with standard keys, it may be that someone who has access to your standard key can create sub-accounts and set up instant payments. There's not the same level of restriction. Now, of course, standard keys exist because in certain situations, you need to use those features, but it's safer to use restricted keys if you can. And this issue is discussed by Peter Wise, who is a WordPress developer and designer, in this post on GitHub. He describes the issue and he talks about how to set up a restricted key and some issues that you might run into. You could be in a situation where all permissions are already available. And then he's working on a small plugin for use with WooCommerce Stripe security. Okay, so it's a good idea. I think it's worthwhile to read his explanation. It's probably better than my summary. Anyway, if you're using Stripe API keys, this is something you should be aware of. And there's a sad story here about the experience of Shannon Mattern, who had her Stripe account hacked. She doesn't know how it was hacked, but over the course of several days, she had a very frustrating time trying to get a hold of Stripe customer service of someone who could understand they weren't particularly helpful right off. And she details uh, her experience and how she finally got help and what the outcome was. But it's a cautionary tale about what happens when your Stripe account is hacked. As it turns out, she was using a standard account and the hacker set up sub accounts and sent themselves instant payments and it ended up costing her about seventy thousand dollars i'm thinking that hopefully by this point you've gotten the idea that you need to pay attention when you're setting up your stripe account you've read the peter wise article and hopefully you're able to use the more secure restricted api key option if it's appropriate for your e-commerce solution now the second topic is securing your WordPress options. You know it's common that we have to enter a license key to activate a plugin or theme, and maybe there's an API key you need to enter for a service like Google Maps or maybe a connection with a payment processor like Stripe. These keys are often stored in the WordPress database in the WP Options table. Our assumption is that they're stored in an encrypted manner to keep them safe, but it turns out that many times they're not. Sometimes they're stored in plain text, and a number of plugins that connect with Stripe do this also. So this second topic is related to the first if you're using Stripe. But even if you're not using Stripe, this issue about how sensitive data is stored in the options table is still relevant. When I heard about this, my first thought was that this is a big security issue. However, it might not be classified by security experts as a vulnerability because in order to access the options table, you have to have database access or be a WordPress admin. 
And I think that technically security researchers won't classify uh, something as a vulnerability if a pre-existing hack is required. However, while a quote-unquote security expert might not consider it a security vulnerability, ordinary people like us probably do. Now, there are different ways that hackers can get access to your website. You know, we see the lists that come from iThemes or uh, WordFence or PatchStack of the vulnerabilities each week. And of course, some of those vulnerabilities are more serious than others. But occasionally it happens that there's one that will give a hacker admin access or access to the WordPress database. I just want to show you that, you know, if you have a tool like PHP My Admin installed, this is the WP Options table. And you can go and look at these options that are saved. There's usually a name and a value, a key value pair. Okay, and many of these are innoxious and not sensitive data. But I want to point out that it's not just database access. Anyone with admin access can also see these values, all of them. Here we are on this testing site, and I've had to blur out in the video the all-in-one WordPress migration secret key and plugin key, okay, because they're not encrypted in the database. And even some things that you see where it says serialized data, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's encrypted. Oftentimes being stored as serialized data just means that it's in an array. Right here we have an example of some kind of sensitive data that is saved unencrypted. And so what this means is that there are times when it doesn't even take necessarily a hacker to get access to your sensitive data that's stored in WP Options. Maybe you have several admin users on the site. Maybe you hire a contractor to fix an issue or, you know, set up a new plugin or something, and you have to give them admin access for that. Or maybe you hire a WordPress site management service to come in and do your updates and backups. Okay, my point is that you don't always have to be hacked for this data to be available. And maybe the, as a business owner, you go in and you put in your Stripe API key, for example, and you think that it saved securely in the database, and you don't realize that somebody else coming along can get your key. That's a financial account. They can possibly steal your money. We often think that, you know, I trust this developer. You know, I trust this employee. I'm happy to give them access to my website to maintain it. But if you were asked, would you give this person access to your bank account? You'd say, of course not. Okay, so that's kind of the distinction I'm trying to make here, that it is a security issue, even if technically some WordPress security professionals might not classify it as such. This hack and discussions about data being saved in the WordPress options table unencrypted, they've been floating around and being discussed in various Facebook groups for the past several weeks. And there's a developer named Calvin Aukin who has thought about this and is suggesting a plugin solution to help. Obviously, the best thing is for us to talk to our plugin developers and make it clear that we're not happy if they're storing data unencrypted in the database. And I really suggest that you, know, you check the WP options table and let them know if that's what's happening. But I did want to point out to you that this looks like it could be an interesting solution. My understanding of how it works is that you can choose which values that you want to encrypt, and it will save them on the WordPress file system encrypted, either in your WP config file or in a JSON file. And then kind of automatically when WordPress is running and those values are needed, the plugin will make them available in an unencrypted format for that purpose. But someone just going and querying or searching or looking at the WP options table wouldn't be able to get that data. So that's pretty interesting. He's talked about possibly offering a plugin to do this for free. 
which he's calling Vaults and Pillars. So I'm sharing the link to his article and discussion about this. Sometimes he lays out all of the possible ways you can get hacked. That kind of turns me off a little bit, uh, be that as it may. He seems like a talented developer. He's identified a uh, common problem and he's proposing a solution. As far as I know, it's not available yet, but it could be available for free. So I wanted to let you know about his efforts in case you're interested in that solution. That's been the discussion about these two issues. There is a text version available on the WebTNG website along with links to the articles discussed. I hope you got something of value from this. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.